Okay, let's get started. Um, really important and cool day today, okay? Very important, cool today, day today, but we got to kind of make sure we get it all covered, so we got to move fast. So while you're putting your um, heading on, passing it in, let me point out some of the announcements. So you're passing in your homework. Um, I'm gonna, we're going to push exam two to a week to tomorrow, week from tomorrow. It was supposed to be the Thursday after fall break. It's a much better idea to have it. We're, we'll get through all the material in plenty of time, and then it'll be fresher in your mind, and you won't have this break to forget a lot of stuff, right? So, and then you'll have it, and then we can have, maybe have the break off or something like that, okay? So I think it's a much better idea to do it a week from tomorrow. So many of you after the first exam, it didn't go as well as you hoped, and you said, so how do I get my grade up in the class? So listen now. You gotta start studying this weekend, studying hard, okay? Don't wait to start studying hard Tuesday or Wednesday. Start studying hard this weekend, and then, and then you'll know the questions that you have, the things that aren't making sense, and then we can have those conversations on <coughs> Tuesday and Thursday before the exam. So um, often I sit down with students, they're looking at the exam after they've taken it, and these are the conversations where the learning is occurring. So what I'm encouraging you to do is let's get that conversation, those conversations before the exam, and let's do well in the exam, okay? So, um, in terms of preparing for exam two, in quiz and exam, I've, I've made a new folder called exam two and related quizzes. Oh, this is, he's on our house, okay, good. <laughs> no, don't go today, this is the most important day. Okay. So, um, so this is a, a page of a review outline of concepts and review. There's no practice problems, but it's just bullet point. It's kind of looking at the big picture and then the little chunks and what, what have we done, what do you need to know? And then I posted for quiz two, two and three, I posted a blank version and with full solutions. Um, the, week, the quiz you have right this week is quiz four, so that will be up soon. And then quiz five will be a take home quiz this weekend so that um, in recitation next week, it can be just study session, okay? So again, if you study hard this weekend, then you'll have, uh, I can be around for the first half of, for the first half hour of, of recitation, and Marissa Bell will be there, and it can just be more studying, more studying, and then with you guys together, and with me there, okay? So, get, and then all the homework, right? So with all the homework that we've done, um, I'll, I'll start putting up some solutions for the homework as well at the same place where you downloaded the actual homework, okay? So in the homework, in the assignment section, you'll see the homework, but now there'll be a new link for each one, not each one, but some of them will have some, some solutions posted, okay? So you've got plenty to dig into, the quizzes, the videos, all the homework to get studying this weekend, okay? This weekend. All right, back to 270, home. Okay, next thing is my math lab. Coming, so we want to, we're actually going to do some my math lab before the exam next week. So it's not for Friday, but it's possibly for Monday. So you're going to get, in, I've, I've set up the course, you're going to get enrolled. Okay, get enrolled today, before Friday. Here's what you need. You need the course ID. So you need to have bought the book, which, which you all did at the beginning of the semester, which gives you um, access on my math lab, and then this, you need this course ID. Okay, and then um, I'm putting together a, a graphic calculator keyboard shortcut list. So as you're working on your file, here's the shortcut list that I'm making. So just uh, really quickly, I can open it up for questions on and this is after I get, after we get an, uh, an, a rough draft of this. Today, then I'm going to post this. It's a separate link on right, right here. So GC keyboard shortcuts. So after today, I'm going to post this first one after class today, and then I'll keep updating it. Right, so we'll always have more and more good stuff. So let's just look at the thing we did at the end of class last time, and the shortcut list. 
and ask, do you have questions about what we did last time? Um, in terms of, so what do we do? We set up the rate function. We set up a delta x slider. We plotted points at the intervals along the axis, the x-axis. We established the left function. We established the step function, and then we graphed the step function. And to get rid of those, the, we don't want the vertical lines. We just want the pretend rate function, right? That's our step function. So to get rid of that, we can just say we don't want it to plot. Don't plot any of, that, any of those endpoints. So don't plot when x is equal to left x, meaning don't plot at our endpoints. And it'll, it'll get rid of those vertical lines. Okay. Um, so uh, I need some help from PC people. The, the is a member of. What is that? What is is a member? Control shifting. Oh, you're so good. Like that? Yeah. Okay. How about less than or equal to, and less than greater than or equal to? Oh, you guys only need this list. I'm, I'm kidding. It'll be great to have. And then Control Shift. Period. All right, continue like this, the dot, dot, dot. That one? Okay, so any, uh, so this is, um, this is everything I could find that I thought we needed. Function parentheses, delta symbol. It looks like, did anyone find delta symbol on a PC? No. Okay, so it's fine. face. Okay, um, but again, that's it. Graphing calculator has no idea what that symbol means. We're just using it. You can just use it as if you're going to use it on a Mac. You're just using it as a, a part of a string or as a as a variable. It has no idea it means change. Okay, so you're just using it as a. So you can use something else. You can use D, or you can write out the word delta. Okay, but remember that whenever you're doing a string as a parameter, you you start it off by doing the backslashes. Anything else? Just glancing at the list, I don't want to take a lot of time, but that you can think of that I've forgotten so far. Okay, so as as you're coming across things, as we continue to use graphic calculator, and there's things that are not on here, email me or talk to me in person. We'll keep we'll keep building this, okay? But I will post this version um, right on Blackboard uh, sometime this afternoon. Okay. Questions about the the step generator? Any questions about the step generator? In your homework, you kind of got to practice this, right? To get it to work, to generate step functions. Okay, here's the cool thing now. Because we've generalized it, we can start A anywhere we want. So you can come up here and just change A. All right, so I'm going to start A 3.5. And because we've done everything in terms of A, when you change A to 3.5, it starts at 3.5. And that's somewhat impressive, but the real impressive thing is what? To do mess around with delta x. Again, everything that we've done is in terms of the parameter delta x that we can slide. And so, what happens when you decrease delta x? The interval, the points on the axis follow suit, and so do your steps. So how about your TI-85? You see why we don't do a TI-85 in this class? <laughs> this is this is really powerful to see what's going on. Okay, now so if you make delta x really small, and then come here and I'm going to turn off the original rate function with delta x really small. What do you see? So I just turned off the original changing rate function. This is still a constant rate step function, but what do you see? Kind of the rate of change. It's yeah. It's like basically, and so the smaller you make it, I think I, I got a little bit more to go here. What do you see? How about this step function for a pretend rate function? Good or bad? Good. Fabulous, right? Good. It's amazing. You can't even, you can barely see that it's, this is still a constant rate piecewise step function. But you can't, you can't tell the difference. Okay? That's using te te technology, okay? That's, that's, that's good stuff. Was that a question? I did. Thank you. I did. I started with work once. Okay, any other questions about um, the this, this step function generator? So today, we're going to build the one line accumulation function from the step function, okay? Are you excited? I am. Okay. 
Because so far, what has our what of that that what does that accumulation function look like? The, the the rule for it. Remember? Is that piecewise? Piecewise. Remember we had the the point slope form over and over again, right? Point slope form. And so, how would that look for this one? <laughs> right? It would yeah. It would be it would be a stack of piece of, of um, point slope forms a mile high, right? But so we want to do it in one line. We want to do it in one line. So here we go. So let's review, okay? So this stuff should look familiar here. I'm showing you a graph that has some familiar things. I'm showing you an expression that should look familiar. And so a couple questions for you and the person around you, or the whole group. What kind of function is implied by the blue curve? What's the input and the output? What kind of function is the pink step graph? What's the input and the output? And why do we create it? Go. So the input is x and the output is y. Okay, well, but what does y represent? Rates. Rates, right? So the output y is the rate. Okay, pink step graph. What's the input? Oh, Aaron, question? Oh, good, you want to answer? I was going to say, isn't that the mid step? What's that? Is the pink line the mid step? Okay, so he's saying it's a mid. It's based on the mid of the intervals. Okay, yeah, it's a mid step. But what, so what, just in, before we get to that, what about the input and output of the pink step graph? Input is? X. Whatever our x quantity is. And what kind of quantity is the output of the pink step graph? Constant rate. What's that? It's in a constant rate. Constant rate. Is it still rate? Right. Yeah, it's still the same output values as the blue one. It's just now it's, it's, now it's constant rates, right? So it's still rate of change. Look, both rate of change, right? OK, why do we create the pink step graph? We've asked this a million times, so hopefully this is sinking in. Why do we want that, Christian? Uh, so we can have a constant rate over a, an interval, so we can, it's easier to easier to accumulate for the convenience. Yeah, it's possible, right? It's possible to accumulate um, by using what what principle? Constant rate of change, right? Constant rate of change, delta y equals k delta x. So uh, let's see. I'll just do two at a time here. Okay, so name all the specific characteristics of this particular pink step graph. So one of them was, um, Aaron pointed out, it's a mid graph. So besides the fact that it's a mid graph, there's lots more to talk about about this particular one, like numbers, right? Actual numbers, all right? So do that. And then um, the third interval from 0.6 to 0.9, how is the constant value determined? Go. Yeah, I 
So, so this third one, give me an expression. So give me an expression that, that represents that constant rate. So what, how could you represent it with a math expression? Okay, let's talk about characteristics. So what was one thing you came up with? Characteristics for the pink step graph. Just shout them out. He wants delta x to be 0.3. Agree with that? What else? A equals zero. And we said it's mid, right? Anything else to talk about on that one? Can you think of anything else? I'm not sure that there is. Okay, cool. So the third interval, 0 0.6, 0 0.9. So I'm pointing it out right there. So how can we write a, an expression that, e, that is equal to, equivalent to, that constant rate? What expression could we write? Chloe? Um, just to get the y value of that? Um, that constant rate. So that's a, there's a constant rate for that third interval. Yeah, so, so the value of the constant rate is going to be r of x2 plus x1 divided by two. Mm -hmm. OK, so we, can you see what the? So we can just, yeah, just, just see the number, yeah. Uh, zero point seven five. Agree with that? Yeah, it's good. So the, the constant rate for that whole interval is the rate at the, at the midpoint. The midpoint from 0.6 to 0.9 is 0 0.75. Okay. Keep, yeah, we already did that. So we'll just do number five for now. Write step function in another way. So how could you write that function step x? How could you write another expression that's equivalent to step x? Figure it out. Go. Ask me again. Well, so, so this is like one particular output of this whole function. So now I'm asking about the whole function. It's kind of this, it's the same question actually. I'm here I'm asking for a particular output. Here I'm asking for the whole function. Yeah. yeah, don't get bogged down on the what now. This is really the same question, but the first one is just for a particular output. This is for the whole function. I try to make the test as clear as I can. Yeah, I, I do my best. Okay, anyone got it? Step X is the same as, how about somebody new? Janae, did you get it? We need a new expression that will be the same function as step x. Or, and basically, where does step x come from? How do we build step x? The rate of? That's another way to write that function. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's the only other way. That's where, how it's built. You take the current x value and you put it into mid. And then you put that mid value into the rate, it'll give you the rate of that constant rate at the at the current x value. So R of mid of x. Make sense? Review. Okay. So you got this sum up here. And I want you to relate it to the graph. What does every part represent? So I'm gonna break it down. So let's start here. So this this will be number say A. And then say that right there is B. 
and then the whole thing is C. So what 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 does A mean? What does B mean, for example? And what does the whole thing mean C? Go. So maybe before we do that, we should say this is a rate for some quantity we're calling y. Okay, so this is the rate of y. Okay, so A here, so R of 4. What is R of 4? Peter? It's the rate at uh, the constant rate at the fourth interval. The constant rate at the fourth interval. So is this the, the highest one up here? Okay, that's R of 4. It's that constant rate at the for that fourth interval. Okay, what about B? R5 times delta x. Connor? So what does that represent? R5 times delta x. Rate at the fifth interval. So this rate right there. David, you agree with that? This whole expression B. What does this calculate is the question. What does that give? Alexander? He wants delta y. Right, because what, what are, what's going on here? We're using, what principle are we using? Right, we're using, and what is that? What principle? Constant. We're using constant rate of change to calculate a delta y. So now I ask you, what is a delta y? What does a delta y represent? Yeah. What's that? An accumulation. An accumulation, a little bit of accumulation of the quantity y. So it's the little, it's how, it's the little bit of accumulation associated with that rate over that change in, change in x. So it's a little bit of accumulation, right? A little bit of accumulation. So a little bit of the accumulation of y. So we have the rate of y and we're building towards the accumulation of y. All right, what about the whole sum? So all that sum together, what would that be then? Jonathan? Uh, that, that would be the total accumulation of the function. From? Uh, from the interval of 1 to 10. What's that? From 1 to 10. From 1 to 10? Well, the intervals. So R1 starts where? Where do we start? Zero. Zero. So put it all together. Zero to three. Zero to three. He wants the total accumulation from zero to three. Yep, that sum will add up all the bits of accumulation, our bits from delta x intervals of 0.3, and give us the accumulation, the total accumulation from zero to three. Any questions so far? Okay, so then identify what in everything above, what shows the accumulation from zero to 1.2, rewrite it with summation notation. Go. So. Show the accumulation. What what up here represents the accumulation from zero to one point two, and can you represent that with the sum notation? I'll collect all more. Go ahead.
Okay, Marco, you're up. So what up there shows the accumulation from 0 to 1.2. So how, what in all this up here represents that? Okay, it has to do with the, so you're focusing on just the fourth interval here. Is that going to give you the accumulation from 0 to, to 1.2? Okay, Kaylin, what do you think? Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think, um, I don't know how to put it words. Okay, so what up yeah. here shows the accumulation from 0 to 1.2? Oh, it would be um, <coughs> R4 changing X. It would be A. That? Yeah. So that, so you're agreeing with Marco? No, I'm saying, That's this, what I'm saying, the sums of R1 change in X plus R2 change in X equals the sum of R4 change in X. So the sum of these three equals that? No. That's what I heard you say. No, the first four, the first four equal, equal the accumulation from 0 to 1. Point. Got it. Talk it out. That's great. Awesome. Talk it out. It's the sum of the first four. The sum of the first four will give you accumulation from 0 to 4. And so as summation notation, the point, this part of summation notation isn't to be scary, but to be convenient, because we got the same thing over and over again. So we just want to write it once, and I'm guessing most of you used I, right? So why write four of them when you can just write it once? And then we just want to say the only thing that changes there is which rate. So the rate's going to start at one and march up to four. Questions on number seven. Are we good? Yeah. Um, so so this, you always that will always step by one, and then if you if you don't want if you want to step by something else, then you've got to work that out in the formula. Yeah. If you put two i, then you would have r two, r four, r six, r eight. You see, if you put two i there. Okay, what about what shows the accumulation from 0 to 2.2? From 0 to 2.2. Think about that. So let me point out where 2.2 is. So you got 2 here, and then you got 2.1 there, and then 2.2 is here. Okay, Ross, can you do it? Tell me. So to talk it out. Summation? Okay. Two. Yeah. Yeah, I can't do that. So it's only this is gonna march up by whole numbers. Okay, so yeah, Shannon. You wanna do eight? Actually we can't do eight. Why not? Why can't we do eight? What's that? Right, so if we're doing it this way with these whole numbers, we can only get as far as Seven. So let's let's do that first, okay? So it would be seven of what R I delta X. 
Okay, so is that the accumulation from 0 to 2.2? So now we want to change it to get the accumulation from 0 to 2.2. Austin, can you do it? How can I, how can I amend this to get the accumulation? Okay, is it going to be more or less than this? Okay, so we're going to add on some more. And maybe, maybe we're adding on a negative, okay? But we need, we need something else. Who thinks they can do it? Tell me your name again. Uh, Aaron. Aaron. Um, wouldn't you just subtract 2.1 from 2.2 okay. and multiply that by the rate of 8? Nice. So he's gonna, he wants to do 2.2 minus 2.1. What did he just do right there? What is that? That's a delta x, right? And you want to do it times? Uh, whatever the rate is in rate 8. Very good. That's it. So what... <laughs> And this is the main idea of our accumulation function right here, is that we're going to have a bunch of, what, full intervals we're going to accumulate. But then, you know, what's the probability that if I just stop, I'm going to land on an endpoint? Zero, okay? It's so virtually zero. You're not, you're not, you're always going to, if we just randomly paused the x increasing, we're going to land halfway between. So we need a bunch of full intervals. And then we need one partial interval. But they're calculated the same way. Rate times change in x, rate times change in x. It's just that our, this change in x compares how to those. Shorter, right? So it's a smaller change in x. Okay, so this is kind of the structure of our accumulation function that we're building. It's a bunch of full intervals plus the accumulation from a partial interval. Ross? We're getting the graphing calculator. We're going to be able to do it all. Yeah, we're going to do it. We're getting there. Questions on this so far? Okay, so now we're going to switch switch to the left side function. So that was just some practice with mid. So we're going to switch to the left side step function. And AX is our accumulation of the quantity starting from A and ter terminating at X. That's what we did in that last thing. So we want to represent A 1.2. We already did that. Sum of the first four, right? But the question is, what specifically are these rates? Okay, because we need, if we're doing a function, then everything has to be ter in terms of the current value of x. So in terms of 1.2, what are these rates? So for this particular example, the graph I've given you, you find them. So what are those rates? R of what? Okay, R of what? To get A of 1.2, so R of what? So these are, your, these are numbers here, okay? Now we're switching, switching to the left side, right? Switching to the left side, set function. So is the task clear? What's the first one? R of what? Zero. Then? 0.3. Easy, right? Okay, so now, same thing, but in terms, not in terms of those values anymore, but in terms of A and delta X. So can you fill in expressions of A and delta X that gets those same rates? Go. Sounds like you get it. Yeah. Um, so First one is? We can call uh, the rate at one, we can call it rate of A. So just A. And then the next would be A plus one. A plus one? A plus two. How far are we going over one unit? That, that's, that was saying you're going over one unit. How far? And what is point three? Yeah. So by one, you meant one. Delta x, right? That's what you meant. So then a plus 2 delta x and did I lose anybody? Does it make sense? So how do you get, so using a delta x, how do you get out to here, say? 
be whatever A is plus 1, 2, plus 3 delta X is. Uh, would be the left side of which interval? So A plus 3 delta X is the left side of the which interval? The fourth, the fourth interval. You see? A plus 1 delta X is the left side of the second interval. Okay, so now we want to generalize that. Summation notation. If J is our counter, what expression goes in that gives us the right, the correct left endpoint? We want to, we're adding these four together. So what expression of J and A and delta X will allow us to write that in summation notation? Think about it. No, these are the inputs. These are x values. These are the inputs into the rate function. These are inputs. R of. R of zero. R of zero. Do you get it? I think so, but then when J decided zero. No, it's going to start at one. We're going to start at one. Because one is going to stand for the first interval. So we want J to be to be the interval number. So in the first, we got the first interval, right? And the second interval. So J simply wants to be the interval. We don't want to change this. We want to work that out here. So that J is the interval number. So general. Did you get it? Not really. Okay. What was the first one? So let's, let's or the, the fourth interval. What do we do in the fourth interval? We had A plus 3 delta X to get to the left side, right? And what did we do in the second interval? We had A plus 1 delta X. In the second interval, we added 1 delta X. And in the fourth interval, we added 3 delta X. So who thinks they got it? Aaron. J plus delta X. What do you think? Is that what that's doing? Wouldn't that work if you started at 0? Yeah, that's what I said. No. Um, no, J plus delta X doesn't work regardless of where you start. <laughs> Sorry. J plus delta X does not work. No, if you did A plus J delta X. But we want J to be the interval number, so just, just erase that idea out of your mind forever, okay? J is the interval that we're on. Interval number. So we got to work that out here. So, Chloe. A plus the quantity J minus 1 delta X. A plus... The quantity j minus one delta x does it work. We always start with the a, and we're going to add always add one less delta x is than the interval that we're in. You see? So we're going to well, we're going to add one less. You see? Doesn't make sense. So we're always going to add one less delta x is than the interval in the fourth <laughs> interval. To get to the left side of the fourth interval, we're going to go three delta x's. To get to the left side of the second interval, we're going to go one delta x. To get to the left side of the third interval, we're going to go two delta x. So it's always one less delta x than the interval number of interval that we're in. Is it better? Okay. So what about a of two point two? A of two point two. So how many full intervals? So again, a where's a of two point two? There's our two, x equals 2.2. So full intervals. We know how to do full intervals. Express seven full intervals as a sum. Express this, the accumulation of seven full intervals as a sum. We already know how to do that. OK, so you're doing that in summation notation. But does that give us A of 2.2? What do we need also? Which is plus a little more, right? Plus a little more. And it's going to be right, R8 delta X. So those first seven, summation J equals I to 1 to 7 of what we just did, right? That'll give us the sum of the first seven intervals. B 
the amount you go in delta x's is always one less than the interval that you're in to get to the left side of the interval. It will always be one less delta x, that's the j minus one, to get to the left side of the current interval that you're in. Okay? Plus what? So what, how do we calculate that little more? Can you write an expression in this particular case for a of 2.2 to get that little more? Anybody think they can do it? R of 8, and what would delta x be? So R8, not R of 8, it's R8. Yeah. And what's delta x in this case? 0. 0.1. So this is the eighth rate, right? It's not, it's not the input is an eighth, it's the eighth constant rate times 0. 0.1. Okay? But we want to write that in terms of the value 2.2. How can we write that whole thing in terms of the value 2.2? See if you can do it. So how can you how can you write that in terms of the value 2.2? And how can write can you write that in terms of the value 2.2? Because where, where does this come from? This comes from a, a, a current x value of 2.2. So express that as your 2.2 and see if you can express that as your 2.2. In terms of in terms of 2.2. How about this point one? That's easier. So, Melody, how can we write the point one in terms of 2.2? So, we're, look, we're trying to get this delta x right here. So, what does 2.2 have to do with that? Yes, so we're at point threes. So, yeah, good. All right, so that's our delta x in terms of 2.2. And what about R8? Anyone, can you express R8 in terms of 2.2? So we, what happens? We want to put, yeah. Right, and what is 2.1 relative to 2.2? That's right, it's R of 2.1. And where does 2.1 come from? Left of? Good. It's the same thing again. So we want r of left of 2.2 times 2.2. And actually, what is the 2.1? That's left of 2.2, right? So now we've got the whole thing, that whole little, all this work for that little bit of accumulation, right? All this work for just that extra little bit. 2.2 minus the left of 2.2 gives us delta x. And then the, the rate in that interval is r of left, 2.2. That's what we said. Okay, so we, we just have to summarize now. We basically got it. We're going to sum up a bunch of full, the, the accumulation for a bunch of full intervals. And then we're going to get the, the little... Accumulation left in the last partial interval. Okay, so before I go on, any questions? If I lost you, can you ask a question to get? Here's your chance. Yeah, Christian. I'm just a little confused by the r uh, 8 plus j minus 1 delta x times delta x. Okay, so just quickly again. So if I'm in the third interval, here's the third interval. How many, to get to the left side of the third interval, how do I get that x value? I'm going to take a plus what? Two, two, two inches. delta x's, right? So I'm going to start at a and I'm going to add two intervals to get to the third. So think of that third interval, I'm adding two delta x's. So j is the interval number. I'm going to add a to one less. So if I'm in interval three, I want to add two delta x's to get to the left side of the interval and get that rate. Better? Yeah. Other questions? Yeah, how's that? It's like to the left end of the Yeah, well, everything's left here, yeah. So you want the right end for you to say plus one? Or just for some say minus one? 
Um, if you want to use J to get to the right end, how many delta x's to get to the right end? So here's the third interval. How many delta x's to get to the right end of the third interval? Three. Three. So what would it be? Just J. Just J. That would be one way to do the right. There's other ways to do it. But one way to do the right would be A plus J delta x. Okay. So, summarize it all again here. So what's that? Uh, try again. That's A, the starting value, right? Okay, what's that? The current value of X. Whatever, wherever we're accumulating to, right? The input. Okay, what's that? Left X. Okay, the X value at the left end of the current interval. Okay. Is it still acceptable to call that XL? Sure. Yeah, but um, so in terms of the function, left x is the function, yeah. But you're, yes, it's xl. It's the same thing as xl, that's right. Okay, and what is our overall accumulation function going to be? The sum of bits from what? Full intervals plus? A little bit more, probably. Most probably a little bit more from partial delta x interval. Okay, and how do we get those little bits, the, the full changes? This was this thing that we did. Right? Sorry, Ryan. And we rewrote it as that. The question is, how many full intervals? If we're starting at A and going to the current value of X, how many full intervals is that? We've done it. Do you remember? Yeah, Alexander. Of? Of? A minus X over delta X. Yeah, you got it. Remember that we remember did that? The number, so if you take x minus a and divide by delta x, you'll get that distance with the decimal. But we want the number of intervals, so we're going to chop off the decimal with the floor function. So we're going to stop accumulating as many intervals as the floor of x minus a over delta x. Cool. And then the last little bit is r of what? So what rate are we taking for that last little interval? If we are going to the current value of x, we want the rate where? Left x. Left x. And what is delta x? x minus? Left x. Is that, that's their delta x. x minus left x. And the rate we want at left x. Christian had a light bulb. That's it. This is it. So now, had I shown you this on the first day of class or even two weeks ago, you might have dropped the course, right? Yes. Yeah. But you should get it. You should get everything. We've talked about everything. So, but what it boils down to is what? What's this part about? Summing up the full intervals. Accumulation. Bits of accumulation from the full intervals. And then? A little bit more. A little bit more. But all of it is what? Every, a bit of accumulation is what? It's all the same. <clears throat> the big picture of this is just what? R delta x plus R delta x plus R delta x. That's what you got to see. That it's you're using constant rate of change to get the little bits of accumulation for many constant rates. And then we just have a smaller one at the end. So we'll call R L our last, and that delta x will be smaller. <clears throat> okay, so what do you need to put this in graphing calculator? The only thing, the only new thing you need is summation notation, which is on the list. I think for everybody, it's Control S. So anyone got graphing calculator up? Yeah. Do Control S. <laughs> control. <laughs> control Shift S. Does it give you the sum? Yeah. And then it should give you some places to fill some things in, right? Yeah. So all you need is Control S on Mac or Control Shift S, and you're going to put in your starting value, and you in that little place up there, you're going to have to do floor of that thing. Can you go back to slide? Uh, yeah, after, after we're done. So a minute, we're done time. Okay. So um, recitation, you guys tomorrow have a quiz. The, the
bullet outline is posted, then we'll have homework for Friday. We'll have a take home quiz Friday. And this weekend, start studying for next Thursday's exams.